Welcome to Cosmic Comics, Games and Collectibles, your zen of geekism. We carry comics old and new, magazines, toys, games like Pokemon, Magic, D&D, Want Godzilla, Ultraman, Star Trek, Ninja Turtles, Funko Pop? You'll find it all here. Shop our Cosmic Sound Room and pick up a record or two. Enjoy our comic coffee lounge with a cup of Sasquatch coffee while geeking out over a super cool movie on our big screen. Cosmic Comic, Games and Collectibles, Superman loves us and so will you. Hi everyone, Jason Hyde here, inviting you to join us every Saturday morning for news. The week's headlines in science fiction, fantasy, horror, comic books, video games, plus Comic Con updates and the weather, and the occasional interview along the way. We call it Good Morning Multiverse. We hope you join us every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 Central, right here on Sci Fi for Me TV. Entertainment Group presents the Madness Comic Network with original programming and additional comic-related content. Tune in and subscribe to Comic Talk with Pops Van Zant on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexandra Fesadeghi. We have, we have the best studio audience. They, they applaud everything I say. Oh. <laughs> Alexandra, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. So you are, um, you're promoting the, the film Guns of Eden, mm -hmm. um, which, which I've watched now. I, so I'm going to be an informed interviewer tonight. Usually I am completely fly by the seat of my pants. Mm -hmm. uh, I enter knowing nothing. Uh, so I'm a little bit more dangerous tonight than uh, than I usually am. But, <laughs> okay, cool. But before I get right into it, uh, you know, you're in the creative industry. Uh, I mm -hmm. work with um, a lot of people who decide that they want to go into creative uh, endeavors of either writing or art or acting. Um, and they all, they're, it's a risk. Uh, what um, what motivated you to take the leap into uh, into, into this field? Um, you know, it, 
I feel like it chose me like pretty early on the craft chose me and um, I fought it for like a hot sack. And then I was like, nah, I'll just do it. Um, and it was really just like ultimately like the most passion I had for anything. So I was like, well, it doesn't make sense to not do this because I'll regret not doing this for the rest of my life if I don't do this. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of just the that was the decision right there. I was like, well, I'd rather just do it then and not regret not doing it. You know, if, if you if you love doing it and you're not fighting to get to do it, mm -hmm. it's kind of a, the perfect gestalt. Um, right. You know, just do it. Right. Um, exactly. So, so what was your, what was your initial break into this? I mean, was it like, you know, high school plays, uh, local commercials? How did you really get uh, the ball rolling with it? Yeah. I mean, I, I discovered it in, in high school. Um, I was a freshman in high school and uh, just in, a, in an elective class. And I, you know, knew that like, I loved movies, but I didn't know, you know, how much I know now. So, you know, in class, I realized it was really just immediately. Um, that I was like, oh, this is a thing. And I basically followed it all of high school. We were in um, like a traveling like honors theater program in, in my high school. So it was pretty intense. Um, and it was a really nice program. So I got to learn a lot about the craft um, just in high school. And then I went to college for it. Um, and now we're here. Your, uh, your role in Guns of Eden, that's, a, that's, that's an action lead role. Is that what you... Uh, normally trend toward now that you're making films or do you mm, I mean I think probably films? probably more now um <laughs> it's um I think it's a it's a fit it just never it hadn't happened yet you know I I played some active parts but never an action person you know like there was there'd been like a little stunt here and there or something like that but it was never like all right you're spraying 30 people down in the scene you know <laughs> it was never that kind of thing so this was the first time to really be um fully in that type of role how um how dedicated i guess do you have to be to uh keeping yourself fit because for, for an action role you, you you and you are a fit person anybody watching the show can say oh yeah she looks like she's pulling that off um, <laughs> What, what's your workout routine like to stay that way? Um, you know, when I was in my early 20s, um, it's funny because I, I wasn't ever good at sports, but I always liked like hiking and I always liked um, like going to the gym and that kind of stuff um, and more like adventurous things like, you know, um, boxing or rock climbing. Like it was just I was never good at like soccer or, you know, track and field or anything. So, you know, I explored it more in my early 20s, um, like with weightlifting so i got a little bit more into weightlifting and that kind of built me up to what my normal stature is which i realized it's probably one of the best things for my body specifically um because i'm pretty sturdy so I, i'm naturally a little bit stronger um so it was like weightlifting for this role i just added got a little heavier with it um and then some boxing some you know cardio like biking running that kind of stuff just for like cardiovascular health um and just because i knew it was going to be a pretty intense shoot uh, but for you know for the actual role itself i would say it would be like the boxing and, and the weightlifting that really did it uh so so what do you what do you bench because people want to know <laughs> i'm actually mostly just do push-ups Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, when you, you said weightlifting. I'm like, okay, it's people going to want to know exactly what. No, what you know, it's more like deadlifts, you know, like my lower half is more weighted stuff. Um, and I do like curls and I'll do like shoulder presses. Um, and I'll be like 30, 35 feet, like on both hand for the shoulder presses. Um, so it's nothing too serious. Um, but for, for chest and stuff, I do, I do like pushups just because I, I mean, I weigh enough at that point. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. uh, we have active chat tonight watching my uh, pops. Van Zant is out there. Says, uh, Hey, yo. And says, hi, uh, Mr. CCDV says he played water polo back in high school and the army was, uh, was easy for him because of, yeah. Yeah. The, the pushups 80, 80 in two minutes is pretty impressive though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is, that'd be a blur. Yeah. <laughs> I don't uh, even know how you would do that. That's intense. That's that's that's, that's what that's that's forty in one minute, twenty and a half. That's a yeah. that's almost a, push of a second. It's doable. Um, it's very doable, I guess. 
just just commit and don't think about it until you fall down, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Um, until failure. I, I, I used to try to keep fit. Um, and my, my regimen was, I didn't have a set number in mind of any push-ups or sit-ups, but it's like, I just remembered what I did the day before. And I said, one more uh, right. each, yeah. each night. And, um, and then, you know, kids come along and, you know, jobs start earlier and suddenly, you know, you, you're 40 pounds heavier than you were before. And it's not where you tried to put it. Right. Uh, right. Exactly. So <laughs> I, I'd love to get back to it, but uh, I think I'd probably kill myself after 10 push-ups now. Um, <laughs> I'd have, I'll start with five. Yeah. It's five, but it's five today and six tomorrow. That's right. Absolutely. You always, always do one more than you did last time. Right. Exactly. Uh, so by the time I'm 70, I should be able to do a million. That's, exactly. You got that 80 in two minutes. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so out of high school, uh, you've had all the acting touring, uh, on, on stage and stuff. What's your first film role and how do you, how do you get that? Uh, my first film role, uh, would be Shakespeare Shitstorm. And that is Lloyd Kaufman, Trauma Entertainment's, um, producer and director. That is his latest film. I didn't know so, you were in trauma. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, I actually buddy, just had lunch gonna be very jealous. the other day. He's a, he's a, I love Lloyd. Lloyd. Lloyd's like a mentor and he really was my intro into the industry. Um, you know, I met him when I was younger, when I was still in school. And then finally, you know, they had just finished Return to Return to Newcomb High. Um, so they were kind of uh, doing a lot of press for that when I had just met him. And then um, in 20, 2018, 2019, they did Shakespeare Shitstorm. So. That's, that's when uh, that, that was like, and that's when I was really starting to do professional acting and not just training because up until that point, I had really just been training. Um, and then I was like, all right, well, let's professionally start doing this now, like as a job. Um, and that was, that was my first like role. Let's collect Which, a check now. Yeah. Right. Uh, speaking of collecting checks, uh, Guns of Eden, I found out was a, uh, an Indiegogo project, which yeah. uh, is, we're no stranger to this. Every night on the show, we're talking to somebody with an Indiegogo project, mm -hmm. uh, almost 95% of the time about comics and graphic novels. Mm -hmm. uh, and the case with, you know, first of all, with Indiegogo, you've got to put pictures up to show, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what we're making. Please invest. Uh, but when it's like a writer doing a comic book and mm -hmm. not the artist, uh, they have to pay the artists up front to get some visuals to show in order to entice investors right, right with a movie um and and without you know i don't want exact details i don't want your tax returns on this uh but do do the producers pay the actors up front for the movie or some of the scenes of the movie and then go out and try to crowdfund it or was everybody fully vested in the project uh we make it or we don't uh so i think you know if you're speaking generally about crowdfunding it can go any of those ways. So if you're going to film a teaser, um, most likely you're going to be paying your actors for that one. Now, sometimes you get like that in-kind deal. You have like a friend that, you know, has all their gear and you get it for free and, you know, all of that stuff. But um, most of the time there's a at least a little bit of seed money to start with some visuals just to entice people. With Guns of Eden, I know they shot um, a full teaser actually before I was ever even on board. It was like a placeholder teaser. Um, and some of the actual cast was in that one, but they were still, I don't, I don't think they had even started casting for Megan, um, because they didn't know which direction they were going to go with like a local hire or, you know, expand out or, you know, what they were going to do. Um, so they, they did one beforehand and I'm not sure, you know, what the price tag was on that one, but you know, they definitely put some money into creating a, a teaser beforehand. Um, so that people saw that it was going to be cool. Yeah, and the uh, the crowdfunder raised uh, eighty something thousand dollars. So mm -hmm. uh, for for a movie, that's a low budget. But you know, you guys didn't really need. You know what? I say you didn't really need a whole bunch of special effects, but you had a lot of explosions and squibs and. Um, yeah. And sometimes I'm surprised where green screen gets used where I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's um, you know, it's good if you can't see it. It's good if you can't tell, because then yeah. you're staying in the movie, and that means that we did our jobs. So um, how did you find out about this project? Did they come to you? Was there a, a, a listing somewhere that said, hey, we're looking for somebody to be a, a, a police officer? 
Um, so we actually, like a few years ago, I had met um, my friend. He's all, he's a director um, based out of LA. Uh, his name is John Woodruff. And we connected at a festival. Um, it was one of my friend's festivals. And we, we'd been staying in touch, you know, mostly through like social media. And we we're like, okay, one day we're going to work together. He has a, he has this awesome movie out. Um, and he's like getting into pre-production for the second one, but we haven't known each other during like, you know, him filming a, a film. So we've been staying in touch for years. And then he, he says, Hey, my friend is casting for this film. Uh, he's a really, really great filmmaker. I think you should reach out to him. So he sends me, it was a Facebook post. Um, and I'm honestly not on Facebook too much. So he had to send it to me. I think it was outside of Facebook. Um, so I reached out, actually heard nothing back. So then a few months later, um, I reached back out and I said, Hey, you know, hope, hope you guys, hope we can work together at some point, you know, like, you know, appreciate you reviewing my stuff, whatever, you know, just like a follow up email. Sure, um, sure. and you know, what I found out later was the one that I had, um, sent an email for ended up getting put on the back burner and that Guns of Eden had end, ended up becoming the movie they were doing. So I sent that follow-up email and within like 30 minutes, I got a response saying that they wanted me to read for this role that of their film. And I was like, oh, that was incredibly fast. And, you know, I read the breakdown and it's like this really, really cool character. And I'm like, I can do this. Like, this is, this is like right up my alley of something I would want to do and could, I think I could pull off. Um, so then we went through with the audition process. Um, and here we are. And, and the film, the film is out there. Um, in fact, folks, if you uh, want to see this film, there's a link right below here that will take you to Amazon. It's available in lots of places. We have an affiliate link through Amazon. It helps keep things rolling along here. Uh, we don't make a whole lot, but, if you want to click it and get it that way, you know, we'd appreciate it. Uh, but you can find it anywhere else. It's uh, currently being sold on DVD or streaming. Um, so the plot in its, in its barest sense here, I don't want to give any spoilers away here, but uh, you, you play a police officer who um, accidentally, uh, and because you have really good aim, <laughs> uh, accidentally shoots another police officer mm -hmm. uh, dead. And you're you're on you're on the leave, um, and your partner decides that you and some friends should go shooting in the woods or, or camping in the woods rather. Camping, yeah. Um, and while you're there, you just happen to witness a murder mm -hmm. um, committed by local law enforcement. Right. Uh, and and now your your fugitives on the run in the woods, uh, and they're calling in all the reserves. And yeah. apparently. Was was this filmed in upstate New York? Was it meant to be? Yeah, upstate this, New York? yeah, this was all in Buffalo. Okay, well, well, apparently all of upstate New York is uh, more redneck than Arkansas, where I'm at. Uh <laughs> yeah, see, this is this was a big thing that Greg wanted to show is that it wasn't. We have this prejudice towards the South for being racist or something, you know, from back in the day. And he was like, no, don't you put on a Southern accent when he was talking to all of the militia. He was like, do not put on a Southern accent. He's like, this, these people are from here, you know, like from Buffalo. Yeah. So he, he was, he was very adamant on showing that it was more of a universal thing that these people are everywhere. And, uh, and, and it was, um, it was interesting because it was, it was obvious and yet it was downplayed. I mean, you only heard one time when, when preacher, uh, the, the man's last name um, says, you know, we have four people out in the woods. One of them's a black guy. And you can just kind of tell right. in the inflection really? is like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and you know, none of the militia members were <laughs> at all. Nope. Uh, <laughs> you know, and it was, uh, um, so. it was a big militia. Yeah, it was a big militia. Yeah, it was these, these subtle things, you know, not to like smack people in the face with, with these like views, but just saying like, hey we know this type of person. We all know this type of person or we've heard of this type of person. Yeah. And it was, um, it wasn't really, um, heavy handed. I want to say, cause it, it, it came across more satirical to me right. because, you know, there, there were, you know, there were characters who were obviously cartoons of, uh, of different kinds of people. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and, you know, the, your, 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 con your congressional candidate, uh, who poses with the guns, uh, right. you know, getting ready to go out in the woods and help shoot. 
uh, while she's posing for her selfies and kissing her gun. It's like, yeah, yeah we've seen that person. We know mm -hmm. these people. Exactly. Exactly. It was just, it was just saying, Hey, this is, this isn't too far off from the world that we live. In. So, so on the set, there were lots and lots of guns. Yeah. Um, how many were real? None. None. We had no is that, real guns on set. Is is that standard? Uh, it depends. It's product. It's it's whatever the production wants to do. You know, it's we had these were all cold guns. We weren't firing actual blanks on set. This was okay, all done so, in uh, in post. Okay. So, so you were just kind of like going bang, 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 pulling right, triggers. Right. Exactly. Then. And then the effects added later. Um, so it's a little bit more acting because you're like, uh, I have to imagine that I'm doing this right now for everyone that was shooting a gun, which is everyone in this movie. Um, but it's definitely a lot safer. Were, were, were the hits also post-production or did you have the little explosive squibs that would. The hits were also post-production. Wow. There, I, I believe they might've had a few practical ones. I don't know those like little intricacies. Um, but I know the majority of the hits were in post-production. That was uh, really well done then because yeah. I, I thought that was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of ketchup packets that would. Nice. Would Good. I'm glad. I'm glad we fooled you. <laughs> well, well, the reason I ask about the guns is, uh, and this has been bothering me mentally for some time here. You know, we had the, the, the tragedy with uh, Alec Baldwin right. uh, who, who picks up a gun on set and fires it at somebody and, and it's a real gun. Right. And I'm just like, you know, everyone's blaming him for not practicing gun safety. I'm like, what actor is supposed to know that the gun is not fake? And yeah. and how would you know? It's uh, also not his job. Like, I understand he's a producer on that film, but like there, there's an armor that is supposed to be there that is handling the guns and doing the safety for the guns. It is not the actor's job to do the safety for the guns. So ultimately, it's really not him. It was like, the it was actually the rest of production. I'm you just, know, I not everyone. Why a real one would be there anyway. I mean, because I, I don't authenticity, maybe I, you know, if they're, if they're shooting blanks, I don't know if it needs to be. Cause I don't know, like I, I'm not well-versed in special effects to be honest. So, you know, you, you know, speaking to a specialist, he would be able to help more. Um, but maybe because they're firing blanks, cause I believe they were using blanks in those guns um, for the effect in camera. Um, but for me, I'm like, I don't necessarily think it's, worth it because i've you know we used a, bu a bunch of fake guns and i see lots of films with you know real guns and they they all look the same you know yeah. it's, it's just uh, like not worth almost you know killing someone or or killing someone or just putting that many people that are making a movie at risk because that's a lot of people on set you know with family yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, every everything there, you know, I think an actor would expect to be a cap gun. Um, and I don't know yeah. if you can even tell the difference by weight. Yeah. Uh, you you carried a lot of guns uh, in Guns of Eden. And, and you know, this was not a gun safety movie, folks. There were people with fingers on triggers the whole time. There was no right. uh, trigger caution. Uh, in fact, you do the you do the one glorious scene there at the end where I'm like, yeah, there's in real life. No one would ever shoot a gun this way. But you've got the out in both directions and you're doing the wonder woman spin and, yeah. and, and hitting every target. Right. Um, exactly. Just magically. Hitting looks every great in the movie. <laughs> right. Uh, movie magic. Now the, the film ends on a sort of a cliffhanger. I mean, you're not out of the woods uh, yeah. when this is done. Um, yeah. Are they talking about bringing you back for, for more? Yeah. It, the, uh, the intention is to do a sequel. So, you okay. know, I think everyone's just seeing uh, all production, all the production crew, all the producers, the director, the rest, they're seeing how this first one is received. Um, so far we've gotten, you know, like some, some great reviews and everyone seems to really like it, um, which is awesome. So as long as, you know, it's released and, and well received, I, I believe we're going to be doing a second one. That That's, that's, that's great. I look forward to seeing that. I guess they're going to crowdfund that one as well. Uh, possibly. Mm, I don't know, actually. I think that's going to depend. Um, they may they may not have to, you know, to defend. You make it. enough off of this one. Yeah, that you've got the seed money. Go for it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, folks in the chat uh, who are, you know, 
know, know their guns and watch their movies. Um, Mr. CCDP, it annoys me more that actors cock their pistols when they're supposed to have a round in the chamber. Yeah, dramatic effect. You know, you got to have that click, click sound. It's like, oh, this is when it's going to happen. It's, we, yeah, this is impending doom. Yep. Uh, Pops is uh, the point. You, you don't point a gun at anyone and pull the trigger. Uh, there has to be some admission of stupidity, at least. Yeah, but the thing is, it shouldn't be a gun. It should be a yeah, prop. Yeah. Um, it, you know, if I if I carve one out of wood and and point it at somebody and pull a trigger, I do not expect a bullet to come out of that thing. For um, sure, like like a, if you're shooting a, a BB gun, you're like, this isn't going to do anything. Um, now there yeah. are things, you know, there are tactics in place for certain angles that you don't really have to ever point a gun at someone, and it's preferred to not do that. Um, that is 100 percent true that you because of angles on camera, don't really have to point it at them. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen by accident when you're in the heat of a scene, because that is how you would use a gun. Um, and I don't know what angle they were shooting. I don't know if it was possible to, to cheat it at that point. Yeah. Ultimately, I mean, it, it wasn't his job to do the safety on the gun. And it wasn't, oh, no, I, don't, no. I believe it probably wasn't his decision to use real guns. It was probably more the art departments um, and the producers. I, I, I still, here, here's the thing. I'm, I'm a, I'm a writer. I, um, I got to write for some of the destroyer books. I have a manuscript that's not published yet. And it has a scene uh, set on a movie set where an actor is given a real gun and doesn't know it. I'm like, stop stealing my ideas. Stop yeah. it. It's coming true. Uh, but, um, you know, in, in, in this case, he was trying to show her how to die and he shoots himself in the head, but right. Yeah, you know, I, I, but I keep I, waiting for someone to say they snuck a real gun on the set to start a murder mystery to frame. Right. The you know, I think sometimes too, you know, people on these shoots, like we don't pay enough attention to like how long people have been shooting, how tired people are when people start slipping on their jobs, because the, I mean, that gun should have been safety before anyway. Um, oh, and yeah. when you safety a gun, you, you, you shoot it enough times to clear it completely. You know, and, and you check if there's anything in there, like you open the gun up and see. So um, it, it wasn't safety. You know, so it, you, if it was safety, it wouldn't have happened. So that that's you're, you're dropping a lot of knowledge here. Uh, did yeah. this come from Guns of Eden or have you worked with uh, guns on other films before this? Yeah, I mean, I've worked with guns on other on other film sets, too. And um, that that is it's just a standard for you know for protection of everyone you know and it should always be treated like it it's a loaded gun no matter what like you know i think some of these people were commenting like it it should be treated like it's a loaded gun it should always be pointed down it really shouldn't be pointed at people it should be pointed a little bit off um there even when it's the prop gun point, even point with it the prop away. gun it's more just like courtesy now it's it doesn't mean it it's not going to ever happen just majority of the time you can avoid it yeah uh, and and pops, that's the, the the big questions here was whose was it and what was it doing on the set? That's uh that's uh that's the armorer's. Uh, it was the armorer's yeah. gun, and uh, it it shouldn't have been on the set. She she put yeah. it out there. Um, yeah, you know, act, actors around guns on a set are like children in the home. It, it's a toy. Yeah, uh, everyone expects it to be a toy. I'm not trying to insult you know the actors, but it's yeah, it's, it's I the mean, same mindset. not every actor knows how to actually shoot a gun. That's shooting a gun on yeah. set. So that's, now, you know, it's up to the production to, to, you know, fill in those holes because they're actors. They're not, they're not like the SWAT team. <laughs> they're not like, they're not all yeah, military. Exactly. Uh, they're, 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 they're not, you know, Delta force here. They're like, no, right. they're doing. <laughs> um, do you shoot? I mean, do you, do you do it if, if only to, uh, you know, look more realistic when you do it on film? Well, I got lucky for this because my brother is military. Um, and since he's a lot older than me and since I've been a little girl, he's exposed me to guns and shooting and how to shoot. Um, it doesn't mean I'm like a pro. It just means I'm, I'm definitely familiar with handling them. Okay. Um, so, so you were able to at least, you know, look like you knew what you were doing at <laughs> least during some of the shoots there, not the wild and crazy. Okay. I'm doing this for, you know, excitement. For the uh, dramatic effect. Um, I would have to say a lot of the budget went on the props because it wasn't just people with rifles and pistols. You guys were pulling out, uh, you know, machine guns. Uh, I don't yeah. even, was that a rail gun that was near the uh, end of the film there? Um, on the back that of the truck? Would, that the truck is, mounted one? I, can, I can't remember, actually. I can't remember what it was called specifically. That was definitely more like the prop master would know better than me. 
It was just, it was a lot of guns. If you like guns, people, and you like uh, seeing bad guys get shot, uh, and you know the the, the trope, the thing. This was okay. This was Rambo First Blood. Yeah. With Alexandra yeah. playing the part of John Rambo. Exactly. Alone in the woods, all your friends are not around. Exactly. And, and you're being hunted. Yeah, um, that was that was the joke on set the whole time. <laughs> I got called Rambo a lot. I bet. Well, it, yeah. it, it, it's very, it's, it's, it's the trope, they call it. Um, right. Exactly. And, and, and we love that kind of stuff. You know, right. you're, you, you, you're, you're at a disadvantage and then you decide to take charge. Uh, you get your first gun in hand and now, now it's on now. the Right. Exactly. The hunter becomes the hunted. Yes. Um, so, so where do you go next from here? I mean, what's, uh, what, are, are you um, auditioning for any parts? Are you currently producing any parts? Yeah, um, I'm. I mean, I'm pretty much constantly auditioning. Um, I have a film that's that we just finished. It's called Bound. Um, it's like a very different type of movie, like drama thriller kind of edgy thing going on. So that should be coming out in the next few months. Um, and then I have a, a film called Eagle Squad versus Alien, which is another action movie. So we're shooting that early next year. I I'm, I'm looking forward to the screeners on that one. That sounds yeah. like uh, that sounds it's, like the kind of uh, sci-fi. Uh, kind of sounds like a B movie trauma kind of thing that yeah we would enjoy. Exactly. Um, so so do you do all your filming in New York uh, or do you go? No, I around? go wherever it is. Like um, if it's I you know Guns of Eden was in Buffalo, Bound that last one was in Jersey. Um, this new one's going to be in India. Um, oh my! Yeah, so you know it just depends on where you know I've gone pretty much all over. You know I'm talking to one filmmaker um, about shooting down in Texas. A lot of shootings now happening down in Texas and down in the South, which is really awesome. So really just wherever it is, you know, it, New York City is hard to, hard to shoot in. It's really, even if you have the budget, it's a pain in the butt. Like I've, I've done it a lot and it's just, you have like no space to breathe. Yeah. You know? yeah I, I had to adjust my head here for a minute because we were, just talking about guns and you're talking about shooting in the South. I'm like, yeah, we, we do. Oh, wait, she's talking about oh, yeah, yeah. Film, <laughs> filming. Sorry. No, it, it's, it's, it's cool. It's, um, it, it's, it's me. Uh, so, so what, what's your ideal role? I mean, maybe, maybe not an ideal role, but uh, if, if someone's going to film maybe a remake of your favorite movie and you've got to get in it, what, what role, what movie kind of would that be? I love this question. Um, so I have two of them. A, I'm the only one who's ever asked it. I know. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. The first first time I've ever heard this question. I love it. Um, the the first one, the more mainstream one, would be Poison Ivy. Since I was a little girl, I dreamed about being Poison Ivy. Which is kind of messed up because she's like the villain. But I think she's awesome. And I don't think we've ever gotten a really great interpretation of her. And I've seen it a lot. And I, being such a big fan of her, think that we can do so much better. Um, and then the second one is a little bit, it's an anime. It's a uh, princess Mononoke. Oh, I saw the Neil Gaiman, uh, in English interpretation of that one. Yeah. So that one, so you want to do a live action Mononoke. That would be, yeah, it's those two are like, since I've been a kid, I dreamed about being those two people. So, so when you say, when you, when you say poison Ivy, now we are talking about the, uh, the, the, the plant lady. Batman. From the Batman. Yeah. Okay. Cause I was like, could be the Drew Barrymore film, but maybe not. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, from from the DC universe. Yeah, it's, I think she's just so dynamic. Um, actually, you know, the the best I've seen her done is the Harley Quinn TV show. You you, you like that one? I've I've been watching that one, and uh, I take it for what it is. It's like Mad Magazine version of the of the right. universe. Yeah, that you know, I think it's a funny show. It's a cool show. That yeah. that's really what I took from it. I was like, this is actually the coolest interpretation of her, you know, you know, because if you read the comics, she's just like she's a really dynamic character. And a lot of times she just kind of gets put into like just like the things that she does and not really her personality at all. And it's kind of it sucks because like Harley Quinn has such a personality, you know, and we yeah. we kind of have mo monopolized her personality so much. So, you know, it'd be cool to see like this other character who actually is really, in, you know living in this, so closely with a Harley, with Harley Quinn, um, but so different yet so similar to finally kind of delve into like who she actually is, not just this, 
you know, poisonous creature that we kind of always interpret her as. So I think that would be really cool. Yeah. She, she's always been better animated uh, than, than live action. I, and I, well, she's only been live action, I guess one. Oh no, twice. No, uh, Gotham, she, Gotham did her yeah. too. Um, yeah. With a was, couple of different actors. Cause she kept evolving. Right. And in Ar the Arkham video game, she's done really, really well too. So it's yeah. whenever she's, whenever she's like done animated, it's really awesome. And I just feel like, they're putting out Avatar too. Like we we don't have the ability to make her as cool for a live action. I don't believe that. Oh yeah. Well, but between that and uh, what I've been seeing people do with uh, like the the 3D art, mm -hmm. uh, mix mix some 3D art with some of this AI art uh, engines that are coming on, and mm -hmm. you're just gonna kick out movies with nobody acting in them uh, <laughs> in the future. Sorry, right. I don't mean to scare you, but it could it could get there. <laughs> It's, I think it's going to get very far. I think it's going to be hard to, you know, the hard thing I think with AI is the eyes. Yeah. And like those, the little bitty human nuances that are super unexpected. The, but uh, with a lot of The stuff, Uncanny Valley. Where it, oh, it, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it, it gets, it. The, the more realistic it gets, the less yes, believable it, it is. Right. Uh, it doesn't look quite right. Uh, my thing with AI is that they're doing faces uh, better, but you still end up with like, you know, six fingers or two elbows on an arm. The It hadn't figured out how to do hands yet. Right. Yeah. We're still still working out the kinks, I think. Yeah. It does backgrounds wonderfully, which is what I use it for. Mm. Um, and then just overlay stuff on top of it. Oh, nice. Well, that's like a strange turn. I didn't expect us to be talking about comic books and art again tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we are. Um, so, so you were watching Poison Ivy as a kid. Were you uh, re reading any of the comics? I mean, were you were you, the, I, were you a geek girl? Hmm? Were you a geek girl? I I don't think you know. I always say this because I always like these things, but I can never like recite things. Um, and I'm not like so obsessed with anything super nerdy. So people are like, "Oh, you don't actually like it," but I was a nerdy kid. Like I was, I was a very nerdy kid. Like you, you were in drama club. Of course you were. I mean, come on. yeah. Anime all the time. I played Bionicles. I played like just all this crazy stuff. Um, and even, even now I, you know, I geek out on like random things like Lord of the Rings and anime and, you know, like, and I'm, I, like I can hear the, the chat like already. DC. Why? I, I can hear the chat already going one of us. One right, of us. Right, right, right. I know. I know. It's true. Right, I mean, well, it's just some interesting stuff. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad that there are more people enjoying it. Um, I keep, you know, sometimes I, I, you know, I look at my own kids and they're like, you know, eh, I don't care about that stuff. That I'm like, no, you don't understand. Somebody's got to carry this forward. So right. I'm glad exactly. There are more people uh, still enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I have um, pretty much come to the end of uh, all the questions I had to ask, and I don't want to just keep you on for the sake of having you here and when you know we, we, when i could let you go but uh is there is there anything about uh this movie or your your future career plans that i haven't asked about that i should have that uh you're you're wanting to make sure people know about um i think just you know guns of eden is like it's it's intense it's a lot of action but it's also a lot of fun it is it is it's a it, it doesn't take itself too seriously i think mm -hmm. um and, you know, again, it's 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 a B movie gun revenge, um, strong female lead, blow things up all over the place thriller. Yeah, um, yeah, and exactly, and get it right down there, right down there below the video, folks. So, with that in mind, um, I just want to thank you for coming on the program tonight. Uh, oh, this this happens sometimes. I leave the back door open, Alexandra. Oh and, yeah. Uh, and, and 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 visitors pop in. Pops, Pops, you have a question, sir. Pops Van Zandt oh, from the Madness no. Comics Network, uh, oh, with no. whom we are affiliated and simulcasting at the moment. Yes, I, I could not let RJ just like fade off like that. <laughs> we have a whole bunch of people in a huge network 
And there's a few of them that would probably love to get you out on their show and help you promote this upcoming book, upcoming movie. Yeah. Okay. You said book because that's what we do all the time. Book. This is what we do. Exactly. Um, we're partnered with the guys over at the Dorkening, Leo Pond, uh, the Still Toking Network with Benjamin Bartlett and Jeff Homan, uh, Nita Lanning over there at, at the Rage and Two Network. So many of us. There are so many of us that just want to get eyes on what you do. Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. Um, the main one I have to mention, though, is tomorrow morning at the Tuesday Morning Brew, our, our girl Lori Calcaterra, mm -hmm. who is a martial artist and a comic book creator and a film, short film producer and all kinds of stuff. She'd love to get have you on the show sometime. I'm just uh, saying, yeah. you know, um, she had uh, Marjean Holden a couple weeks ago from mm -hmm. Jurassic Park and Star Trek and 8 million wow. other dang things. She had, Amazing. the lady has a a credit sheet longer than my rap sheet. I ain't wow. Like, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll get you hooked up with, I'll get you hooked up with Jeff Pops because, you know, Alexandra yes. doesn't make her schedule. She's an actress. Oh, right, cool. She has people to do that for her, right? But it's, yeah, I mean, you said it's tomorrow. Or no, you... not no. I'm oh, okay. saying every Tuesday morning we have a show okay. called the Tuesday Morning Brew. I mean, I'd, yeah. I'd obviously want you to have time to schedule it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I'm down for you know whoever wants to talk about the film and and talk a little bit more, you know, in this kind of format. Like I, I love chatting about it. Awesome. I will look Thank forward you. to seeing more of you then because we're we have this saying we kind of pass people like you around like a fatty. <laughs> okay, we, we always that. pass Do to it. the left, but we pass you all around. We just make Excellent. sure every, as many different audiences can see you and what you're doing as possible. The wow, value of having a network. That. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. You all right. So, so pops, I'm going to send you. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna email Jeff right after this. I'm gonna send him your email address as a CC and say, hey, make that's... sure you make sure you get the right one, the new one. I'll make sure you, you can DM me before I do that. So I make, make sure I get the right email address. Cool. Um, okay. Anything else? Does anybody else gonna come in here and you know try to steal Alexandra away from the show? Uh, <laughs> Now, I know y'all want to. Come on. I'll go ahead and ask one question. What's the most fun you've ever had in the industry? Mm, it's. I mean, it's got to be on Guns of Eden. Guns of Eden was Is like okay. e easily the favorite set I've ever been on. Um, it was just a really, it was a really good cast and crew. Everyone was really positive. Really, nice. surprisingly, even even the villains were so nice. Like they're such nice people. Like actually, maybe nicer than some of like us <laughs> you know like our side um you know and i've talked about that in interviews where you know people are like what are what are the villains like i'm there i'm like they're actually some of the nicest people i've ever met um yeah i mean it was definitely on this film i'm trying to think of like what day specifically um if there was just if there was fun all the time you know my favorite my favorite was um if you see like when you watch the movie you'll see like her going through this huge rock maze that day was yeah. very, very fun. It, it was very smelly. Um, <laughs> it was really, honestly, it smelled god awful in that maze. Um, but it was really, really cool, you know, because it, we were shooting with the drone and it was just super, super interactive and intense and action packed. Um, and it was exactly how it looks on camera, you know. Well, I was going to ask if that was a set or if that was natural occurring landscape. Na Naturally occurring in Buffalo, New York. Wow. Naturally yeah. occurring in Buffalo, New York. Oh, my right. God. Because I was watching you guys run down, down these narrow rock quarters. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm waiting for her to fly that X-Wing over there and just pop a you know laser bomb right down the... Right. The Death yeah. Star. And everyone I'm kept getting stuck in the mud. In Buffalo. I'm going to make them go take pictures or go go run down there, run through there and, and film it, dude, with your Yeah, you pod, should. It's with your great. camera. I want you, you to watch it, Snoopy and go run where she ran and show us. You got to see it. Exactly. You can do the same pictures, same poses and stuff. It's all about <laughs> yeah. interaction. The, the way I look at this is like the more it's more fun if, if you guys interact with us, if we're allowed to interact with you. It may, it just gives everybody, it makes it more fun for everybody. That's what I'm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, especially for like a film like this, you know, it is, it's meant to like bring people joy and like be fun and be cool and, you know, all of that stuff. Looking forward to seeing you and more stuff. But now remember, this was where you've had the most fun so far. Yes, this is now where I've the had the best is fun. yet to come. You got to yes. remember that. I'm always trying to top it. I always try to top that last. I, I always tell them you can only go up from this show. Uh, so. <laughs> Oh my god. We 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 got people looking at you on 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 a whole bunch of different places right now cuz I shared it out to all my different platforms. RJ, oh, you got to just start using the other side of the studio so you can send the ones like this out to more places. We're we're we're, we're, we're simulcasting to uh three different places right now. Uh mm -hmm. pops if you want, I, you you will be able to download this one cuz I did clear out the uh cash cool, cool so if you want to grab it and shove it out there into the other networks uh, yeah replay, what i'll do is I'll, I'll do a late night replay of it Ooh. okay um in the middle of the night tonight and we'll get all the australian people looking at it oh, we got and, it. and we'll australian. catch them english people australian. getting out of bed in the morning because we have a pretty we have a pretty wide international audience rj yep, rj do. does too he really does so we do we get a lot of replay action i know we uh you know we we have our live audience but then people come in after and like you know, oh, I was watching this earlier. Now I'm going to go there's, watch this. Yeah, and there's watch. so right. much other stuff on that it's, you know, you, you can't always get the live views, but you're happy if they're watching it tomorrow or the next day. You yeah, do. Whenever they want to watch it. That's the great yeah. thing about, you know, the world we live in now. Is that yeah, every, everybody's their own TV station. Things. And everybody <laughs> can watch stuff on their own time. Yes. Yeah. And, and, yep. and we, are actually, a... we are actually building a Roku network. We're developing a Roku network right wow, now. Wow, that's for awesome. Our, for our kind of people, for comic and pop culture and, you know, for us. You know, yeah, so absolutely. we're just going to have to do more movies and, and expand out in that direction. I'm, I'm horrible at it, uh, but <laughs> you know, well, we, we have when a, people ask me, I just say, yes, please, content, sure, we'll do it. Yes, yes. And and we will need we will need some filler content for the Roku channel when we kick okay, it off. Okay, great. Now she's filler. Okay. Uh, thanks, no, Pops. I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about we have some people that have approached Ben and Jeff that have independent movies they can't get seen anywhere. Oh, you're talking about putting movie movies up there. Yeah, and they're like, I'm we like, can't get that. anybody to show them. We're like, guess what? We will. <laughs> you know? Nice. Yeah, we will. Put all those things up there. One o'clock in the morning. Yeah, put it on. Yeah. <laughs> independent films, independent comics. You know, game developing, game demos, all kinds of different stuff going on. It, the you know, it's weird how much people watch in the middle of the night. You know, some of my favorite cartoon shows I watched in the middle of the night on Cartoon Network. But mm. Toonami, the late night. Yo, you know, those Toonami are the ones you weren't supposed to be watching, Alexandra. I know. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm like this now. Liquid TV. Was that what it was? She was watching was C Lab 2021. Was it liquid, like robot liquid chicken? television or something? Oh. Courage, the Cowardly Dog, and all of that stuff. R Robot watching, Chicken, yeah. yeah. You weren't supposed to be watching that one. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Right. okay. Right. Now, we, now we are going to wrap up. We're just, yeah, we're just I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you for giving me a little bit of time. And it was for great sure, meeting you. We will have you out on some of the shows on the different yeah, networks that RJ knows of. See, because he knows a lot of people. He ain't, he ain't telling. Hi, Thank you, nice it's to meet you, Alexandra. <laughs> nice to meet you. Peace. Hey, you pops. All right, <laughs> Alexandra, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. I, yeah. I do really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I will get a hold of Jeff and make sure that uh, we can try to schedule on these other networks because uh, there's a lot of people who would want to talk with you that I do know. Oh, awesome. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Folks in the chat, thank you all for being here tonight. We don't have a show without you. Uh, I'm just a podcast falling in the woods otherwise. Uh, and of course, as always, while you were here, we just hope you had a blast. Good night.